So the first thing we need to do, if you look at today our R&D budget, we spend about 5.5% of our defense budget on defense R&D. If you look at countries such as China, US, they spend between 10 to 15% of their defense budget on R&D. So the first change which we need to do if we have to be competitive going ahead is to increase our defense R&D budget. And I'm glad to inform all of you that Honorable Raksha Mantriji has promised us that over the next five years we will move from 5% to 10%. But if you see the way technologies are evolving, it is not going to be enough just to do defense R&D. As a nation, we have to improve our R&D capabilities and spending because in lot of these technologies, the civilian sector actually is ahead of defense. If you look at AI, communication, semiconductors, in all these critical technologies, the civilian sector is far ahead of the military sector. So we have to increase the spending on civilian R&D too. Today we as a nation, we spend 0.67% of our GDP on R&D. Countries like China, US spend 2.5% of their GDP and they have a bigger GDP than us. Countries such as South Korea, Israel spend more than 4% of their GDP on R&D. So that is another area where we have to seriously look at if we have to compete in the future. And there I request if there are anybody here from the private sector, the private sector has to look at increasing their R&D spend. Today of this 0.67% that we spend, 70% of that is spent by the government. The private sector spends only 30% on this overall 0.67%. So that has to increase significantly. One of the challenges of funding cutting edge R&D in industry was who will be accountable for the failure. Unlike DARPA in the US which has a mandate from their Senate and Congress where if failures occur also they don't have to answer to the Senate why they have caused loss to the taxpayer. In fact, if you look at only 10 to 15 percent of DARPA projects succeed because they really look at moonshots when it comes to technologies. We don't have such a mechanism in India. The RDO, if he's, our projects fail, we have to answer to CAG, we have to answer to Parliament why loss has been caused to the government. But R&D has to be looked at as an investment, not as an expenditure. Because even if a project fails and you fail fast, the lessons that you learn from that R&D can be used in several other places. So this mechanism, hopefully, we are now looking at also a separate chapter for R&D in our GFR. Secretary DST has been tasked of, has been tasked to come up with such a chapter and I hope this will happen soon. This will then help us in funding cutting edge R&D in startups, MSMEs, even large industries, which will then speed up our innovation. We need a change in the mindset that everything you do has to succeed. It will never happen that everything you do will succeed. We have to have a mindset that if it doesn't succeed, we close it down and not consider it as a loss to the government or loss to the taxpayers. We have to have a change in the mindset that indigenous systems will not compete and Operation Sindur has been a good 
example where it has been shown that indigenous systems also do well in wars. We have to also move because the theme of the my talk was supposed to be on co-development, co-production. We have to look at international collaborations also. Because a lot of times, if you want to speed up development, you have to look at partnerships. And Brahmos is a good example where we had a partnership with Russia. MR SAM is an example where we had a partnership with Israel. These are successful systems. So we have to look at models where we have to work with like-minded countries to do faster co-development.